What's up everyone, Carlos here. So for today's video, I want to do something special. Over the past few years, I have covered a lot of topics around the Predator universe. As many viewers would tune into my channel at different time periods, they might only see videos from the past few months. But in doing so, they might have missed the ones in the past, and there are a lot of topics I covered in the older videos. So this will be a one hour compilation of my older videos, and then, moving forward from there, I will leave a timestamp to make it easier to find something you want. If you want one hour videos like this, then I might do this for other franchises that I covered as well. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for part 2. The White Hybrids are a race of aliens created by a corrupted AI computer mainframe called Toy. This artificial intelligence computer was seen in the comic books of Aliens vs Predator, deadliest of this species. Like other aliens we've seen before, they have acid for blood, but they have the intelligence of humans and predators. Now, it's that intelligence that allows them to actually use speech for communicating and using firearms. Now, the voice when they're speaking will be the voice used of their host, and they reproduce by normal methods of a facehugger, but they are known to even use other xenomorphs as hosts. The leader of the white hybrid aliens is the King Hybrid. King looks to be more muscular when compared to other drones of the same species. He had white skin with spots, mandibles on the mouth area, and his eyes were red. He also had an inner jaw like normal xenomorphs, although this alien type seemed to lack a tail. It also seemed to be the largest of the white hybrids, which was eventually killed by the alien queen mother during a battle against Trophy's Hatchling, which is a xenomorph-human Yauchua hybrid. Now the drones seem to be the most common of the white hybrids. They are smaller than the king, but are just as intelligent. There was never a white hybrid queen, but the hybrid king did try to impregnate a number of people with queen embryos. Now, the comic books tend to have a vast amount of different types of aliens, predators, and hybrids that have never made it into the movies or video games. So, I'd like to know from you guys, would you want to see more hybrids, or would you prefer them sticking to the original design of aliens and predators that we've seen so far in the movies and video games? Put your comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because I'll do more of these in the future. My name is Asaglow, and I will see you guys in the next video. What's up everyone, Asaglow here, back with another video around the Predator universe. So in this video, I'll be going over the Bad Blood Yauchwas. Now these are criminal Yauchwas who were sentenced to death, but managed to escape. The Predator justice system shows that a very small amount of Yauchwas end up turning into Bad Bloods. Now, in the video game, Predator Kongui Jungle, the term bad blood was also used on predators who were captured and brainwashed. Now, in the comic books, there was a four-issue series about a bad blood predator who broke the species honor code and is then hunted by another predator. This bad blood predator rampages through Pine Barrens in New Jersey while also being tracked by the CIA. The Yachua species holds high value and honor. If a predator has brought dishonor to their people, they must face judgment. If this predator happens to flee this process, then they are considered exiled from the clan or tribe and looked upon as bad bloods. However, if a predator is judged and overcomes their sentence, they are allowed to redeem themselves as it was shown in Predator Concrete Jungle. In this part of the story, Scarface left his predator technology after he failed to die from a self-destruct device. This allowed humans to take his predator technology and reverse engineer it. Scarface was then set on a planet to fight for his life. His clan later returned to find he had survived and was able to redeem himself. So in this process, Scarface chose not to become a bad blood. So it all comes down to each predator's morals and decisions. Now it is believed that the super predators seen in the 2010 movie Predators might have been bad bloods since they captured another predator. Later on in this film, the berserker predator fought and killed this predator by decapitation. Bad bloods tend to have no rules or very little sense of honor when they hunt or fight their prey. Once a predator has chosen the path of a bad blood, they are no longer accepted back into the predator society. 
This would then leave them to wander aimlessly through the galaxy and other planets. These types of predators tend to show more hostility and are mentally unstable, which makes them more dangerous, as very few of them have very little honor left in them. Now, when it comes to combat, bad bloods will still use the weapons and skills taught to them by their brothers, but they are also known to develop dishonorable fighting styles. So, what do you guys think about the bad blood predators? Put your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe for more content surrounding the alien and predator universe. If you use Twitter or Instagram, then follow me there at AcidGlowX. Thanks for watching. My name is AcidGlow. I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back everyone, AcidGlow here with another video surrounding the Predator universe. So this video will cover a predator that was seen in the Predator 2 movie. The Borg Predator, also known as the Lost Predator, was shown in Predator 2 for only a few seconds near the end of the film. After Harrigan defeats the City Hunter, other predators of the same clan appear and surround him. Right before the City Hunter's body is taken away, we catch a glimpse of the Borg Predator's unique armor. It seemed to have armor that had a futuristic or advanced design to it. Now, although this predator did not wear a mask in the movie, the Hot Toys company gave their model a mask that resembled the Borg Predator of the same clan. They decided to call it the Lost Predator. Later on, NECA released their version of this predator with some modifications to the cybernetic armor and a different looking mask that matched the armor design. They decided to call it the Armored Lost Predator. Now the name Borg Predator was given to it because its armor plating appeared to resemble the Borg character in the Star Trek franchise, although I prefer to stick to the name the Armored Predator. Now even though both companies use the words Lost Predator, this term was originally given to the entire clan in Predator 2. This came up when some props from the film were lost after the film's completion, so the term Lost Predator was a good fit. Now I also noticed this design looks very similar to the Dark Blade clan armor that was seen in the video game Predator Concrete Jungle. Now I like the idea of a predator with enhanced weaponry just to see how brutal their technology can be. Now we saw some of this in the form of Alien vs Predator Requiem when the wolf predator had a dual mounted shoulder cannon. That was pretty cool. And we also saw this with the predators in the movie Alien vs Predator from 2004 where those predators had massive blades along their forearms and even their wrist blades were extremely long. Not to mention their bodies were covered with even more armor. So what do you guys think about this? Would you like to see a predator with futuristic armor and advanced weapons make an appearance in a movie or video game? Put your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe for more content around the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow. I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back everyone, Asaglow here with another video around the Predator universe. This video will be looking at the Predator Biomask helmet that is worn during a hunt. The Predator Biomask is a piece of advanced equipment that is used by almost every Predator in a hunt. It serves many purposes such as various vision modes, a gas mask, a respirator, a voice amplifier, a function to zoom in from a far distance, some diagnostic scanning capabilities used for scanning vital signs and scanning weapon functionality and it can serve as a communication device with their ships. Now the design, markings and ornaments on the mask don't seem to offer any benefits so it is believed this is just based on the predator's individual preference. The different vision modes used by the predator varies across the different places it's appeared in. The thermal is mostly used for hunting prey that emits body heat now as for the alien vision mode, this can differ from electromagnetic or to picking up prey that appears to be cold. Now in the Predator 2 movie, during the meat locker scene, Agent Keys and his team were wearing suits that hid their body heat from the Predator. This proved to be a mistake because Agent Keys believed the Predator could only see in one spectrum of light. The City Hunter was then able to switch different vision modes until one vision mode made them visible to him. Now in the original Predator movie, during the final scene against Dutch. The Predator does in fact remove its mask and its natural vision mode is revealed. Since the biomask has so many features that aid the Predator during a hunt, it is very rare that they actually remove it during combat. Now this act was seen in the first Predator movie when Dutch proved to be a worthy adversary. 
so the Predator removed its mask and shoulder cannon for an honorable battle in close-range combat. This was also seen in Alien vs. Predator Requiem, where the Wolf Predator removed his mask and weapons during the final battle against the Predalien. In the 2004 movie, Alien vs. Predator, we can see the Scar Predator use an X-ray vision mode to scan Mr. Whalen's bones and vital signs to see his body was very sick. Predators consider sick or dying prey to not be worth killing, because in their dying state, they would not pose much of a threat. In Aliens vs. Predator Requiem, there was a scene where the wolf predator took a sample of liquid the facehuggers made contact with. This substance was inserted into the wrist gauntlet, and it then gave the predator a vision mode to track facehuggers that were on the loose. This seemed to be a vision mode that tracked bodily fluids. And in the movie Predators, the black berserker predator was seen using a new vision mode that could track vibrations. This was so well designed, it could even pick up vibrations as small as heartbeats. Now, it is believed their mask does offer some form of assistance for breathing on other worlds. Some sources say predators breathe more methane and nitrogen. The comic books have noted this, which could possibly tie in with what we saw in Predator 2, when the city hunter pulled out a portable mouthpiece for breathing. Now, one theory is that the mask acts as a filter, and it's possible the city hunter had to use a portable breathing device because of the pollution in the air. Another use the biomask provides is a waveform analyzer that can record and mimic words from other species. It's possible this might be used as a form of communication, but it's mostly believed to be used for scare tactics on its prey. In Predator 2, the city hunter was able to scan a child's toy gun to see if it was a real weapon that would pose a possible threat. In Alien vs. Predator Requiem, the Predator was able to track the location of the laser grid mines it placed on the exits. This seemed to be a way they could track any weapon they might have left behind. Another feature of the Biomask is its advanced targeting and tracking system that is shared with a shoulder cannon. The three red lasers for targeting will appear as three sides of a triangle, and when it fully locks onto a target, the triangle becomes solid. This also proves to be so advanced that once a target has been locked on, the shoulder cannon will fire at that location, even if the Predator is looking in the opposite direction. This was displayed in Predator 2, right before the city hunter killed Agent Keys in the meat locker. Now, some Predators may have their targeting lasers planted on the shoulder cannon, as it was shown by the Elder Predator at the end of the Predator 2 movie. The Biomask also has the ability to zoom over great distances. This aids the Predator in being able to scan a target or to assist them in aiming the shoulder cannon. Now, it seems a lot of these Biomask features used by the Predator seem to happen almost instantaneously. A lot of these features are displayed during scenes when the Predator doesn't use its wrist gauntlet to activate these features. So one theory is the inside of the Biomask is fitted with controls near the mandible areas. This would allow the Predator to use some features quickly during combat. Now another theory is that since this species is so technologically advanced, they might even be integrated with their masks through their minds. Now of course, these are just theories and are still up for debate. So what do you think about the Predator Biomask? Are there any cool features you would like to see it do? Put your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow. I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back everyone. Asaglow here, back with another video surrounding the Predator universe. This video will be covering the Predator Cloak Stealth Camouflage. Now, this is seen used by almost every predator in the movies and video games. It's a valuable asset during a hunt and can even aid the predator in evasive strategies if it's been spotted. The stealth camouflage effect renders the predator almost fully invisible. The effect can resemble looking at water ripples, or even the effects during a heat wave. This technology seems to bend light off the predator so you can see right through it. Although an invisible predator is hard to spot when it is motionless or moving slowly, the distortion effect of the cloak is more visible as the predator moves much quicker. The stealth camouflage seems to get distorted when it makes contact with water, as it was seen in Predator. Now, in the movie Predator 2, there was a scene in the alley with King Willie being tracked by a predator. As the invisible predator slowly walked through a puddle, you could see electrical effects that were causing the cloaking effect to malfunction slowly. Now, this ability is mostly used when hunting human prey, but it seems to prove a little use against xenomorphs. 
This was displayed in the movie Alien vs. Predator in 2004, where the chopper predator was impaled from behind by an alien tail while it was still invisible. Now, it is believed the xenomorph species have the ability either to sense a target or by tracking their pheromones. Now, this idea of pheromone tracking was presented in the Alien vs. Predator video games, although it has not been explained how the xenomorphs are able to track invisible predators in the movies. Now, some weapons have shown to not be camouflaged with the stealth technology, as it was shown in Predator and Predator 2, while in other sources, like the Alien vs. Predator movie, it was shown that the Predator's spear weapon could be camouflaged. Now, another interesting fact is that when the Predator was shot and hit by Mac after Blaine died in Predator, his stealth camouflage did not deactivate. But in the Alien vs. Predator movie, when the Celtic Predator was hit on the armor by a pistol bullet, it did deactivate his camouflage. It's also important to note that the targeting laser from the biomask will give a Predator's position away while it is camouflaged. Now this cloaking technology seems to have been implemented on their ships as well. Now Predators have been seen to flash their eyes while invisible. Now it is believed this is just a scare tactic used on their prey. Now the stealth camouflage is a very useful ability during a hunt, and many Predators will use it, although in some rare occasions a predator may choose to not use it if it is confident in eliminating its prey without it. Now it is believed predators hold high value and honor, and so they should not rely on the invisibility all the time, but instead learn to hunt and fight without it if they should ever lose the ability to activate it. The cloaking effect seems to bend light, which gives it an almost perfect sense of invisibility in almost any surrounding. It is one of the most iconic tools of the Predator equipment. Now, it's really interesting to see how the cloaking effect has changed throughout all the movies as technology has advanced over time. Now, in some effects, it may look a little bit out of the picture, but you can see all these sources were trying to replicate the same effect. So, what do you guys think about the stealth camouflage effect on the Predator? Do you think it looked better in any of the movies or video games? Put your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content surrounding the Predator and Alien universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow. I'll see you in the next video. What's up everyone, Asaglow here, back with another video around the Predator universe. This video will cover another Predator weapon, the Combi Stick, also known as the Spear. This weapon is made up from an alloy that keeps the spear strong, thin, and lightweight. It is carried on the back of the Predator near the belt area while it's still folded up. Since it has a design to fold up, it makes it easy to carry around during a hunt. Now when it is fully retracted, it increases their melee range. Depending on the design of the spear, it may have added blades or modified parts to it. At times, a predator may add more ornaments or small trophies to their spear. The very first combi stick a predator receives is when they complete all of their training. Spear masters will train young predators in how to use these powerful weapons, and when a predator dies honorably, if it is possible to retrieve their body, the spear is buried with them. The advantage of having a combi stick during a hunt is having an extra melee weapon that has more than one use. Not only can it be used in close range, but a predator can also choose to throw it, which can lead to instant death against some targets. Another benefit is that this weapon does not require an energy source, some combi sticks are modified so much over time that they can even be used to parry some melee attacks, deflect claws, teeth, bullets, and other bladed weapons. A hunter will receive a more modified combi stick over time as they increase their status and rank. Some predators may choose to focus on their combi stick training if they choose to become future spear masters. At this rank, one predator may be so skilled that it may be able to fight off hordes of enemies with just a combi stick. Now this weapon has been seen in a few movies, novels, and video games. It seems to be a staple weapon of the Predator arsenal. It is also considered to be an honorable weapon in the eyes of the Predators. There have been different versions of the combi stick across different sources, but they all serve the same purpose in combat. In the 2004 movie, Alien vs Predator, an elder Predator was seen giving Lex a ceremonial combi stick as a token for her battle in defeating an alien queen. 
During this movie, it is also shown that the spear is resistant to the alien acid blood effects. Now this is another one of my favorite weapons in the Predator arsenal, so I really wanted to do a video on it. But what do you guys think about the combi stick? Is it one of your favorite melee weapons, or do you prefer another weapon? If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to the channel for future content surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching, my name is Aciglow, and I'll see you in the next video. What's up everyone, Aciglow here. So I'm back with another video surrounding the Predator universe. So in this video, I'll be covering information around the Darkblade clan that was seen in the video game, Predator Concrete Jungle. Now, I did a lot of videos about this game back in 2009, so I'll try to leave you guys with some links to those videos for you to enjoy later on. Now, this clan was known for their advanced technology and far superior weaponry compared to other clans. The main predator in this story was Scarface, who was also a Darkblade clan member, who indirectly was responsible for distribution of their technology throughout Earth. Now, every member of this clan had a similar design and armor, which included a black color with red lights on them. Other members that used to be part of the Darkblade clan were three bad blood Yauchwas that were captured by Borgia Industries and implanted with cybernetic technology. They were Stoneheart, Swiftknife, and Longspear. All of them were eventually defeated and given honorable deaths by Scarface. There were also three unnamed young members of the Darkblade clan that were captured by Borgia Industries that eventually were freed by Scarface. However, they appeared to be smaller in size with trimmed dreadlocks. The Dark Blade clan members have personal variations of weapons including the Maul, Glive, Combi Stick, Wrist Blades, Smart Disc, Plasma Caster, Armor, and Biomask. Their Wrist Blades seem to be extremely large and their Smart Disc targeting device can track up to four targets. Their Glive weapon is also enlarged and designed with Plasma Forged Blades for extreme cutting power. Now it is also said that the Darkblade clan are very strong and skillful warriors capable of surviving 100 years on a dangerous planet by themselves while just using a glaive and wrist blade. This was displayed by Scarface during the storyline of the game. He was that strong and he wasn't even the elite leader of that clan. So it explains that even the high ranking predators of this clan might even be greater warriors. So what do you guys think of the Darkblade clan? Would you like to see it brought back in a future film or video game? Put your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video then subscribe to the channel as I'll be covering more topics surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching, this is Asaglow and I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up everyone, Asaglow here, so I am back with another video around the Predator universe. So in this video I'll be focusing on the Predator homeworld, also known as Yauchua Prime. So, the planet has at least two major biomes. One area looks like a dry, humid desert with flowing lava, while the other area looks like a giant, wet jungle. Now, some of the life forms found on this planet are winged creatures called Vidrak that can survive radiation. These creatures are strong enough to kill most life forms and are considered as part of the Yachua's rite of passage, so any aspiring Yachua spearmaster must kill it in order to be considered worthy by their fellow clanmates. Another life form found on this planet are the Quatswa Rish, which are the fiercest creatures on the planet. Young Yachwas are sent out in packs of three to hunt this creature, and it's all part of their tradition to be accepted as adult clan members and be recognized as legitimate hunters. Now, a ceremonial mask made from Quatswa Rish bone is worn by the elder predator as he foresees the young predators on their rite of passage hunt. The ceremonial mask is not used for hunting or combat, but is decorated with three circles on the forehead that represent each of the three hunters, the symbol of unity and teamwork. Now most of you will recognize this symbol by when the Predator uses its targeting laser sights. It would take years of hunting and honing their skills for a single Yachua to kill a Quats Ridge on their own, but once they achieve this goal, they are allowed to break away from their clan and are allowed off their world to hunt bigger game on their own. The last known creature to inhabit this planet are small flying creatures called Quipsas that fly around in swarms near the swamp areas. In the movie Aliens vs Predator Requiem, it is shown orbiting a trinary star system and possesses a ring. It is unknown if the planet has gravity, day and night cycles, atmospheric composition, continental distribution, and other things of that nature. 
the climate here is presumed to be hot, humid, and with intense volcanic activity. The volcanic areas are known to have lethal amounts of radiation, as that's where the Vidrak creatures are mostly found. During the movie Predators, it suggested that perhaps the traditional predators and the super predators had a clan war that resulted in the super predators being banished from the homeworld. The Yatra homeworld is apparently ruled by the elder predators. So what are your thoughts on the predator homeworld? Would you like to see it explored in a future movie or video game? Put your thoughts down below and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video then subscribe as I'll be covering more topics around the alien and predator universe. If you use Twitter or Instagram then follow me there at AcidGlowX. I'll see you guys in the next video. The Medicom, otherwise known as the Medical Kit, is used for treating wounds in various ways by the Predator Hunter. Now, each hunter carries their own version of the Medicomp, although there are similarities between all of them. The Predators tend to keep this medical kit stored on their back somewhere. Now, in the first Predator movie, we see this Yatra pull out a Medicomp that reveals to have a slider, which includes tools like a powder, a shrapnel extractor, two wound clamps, a stimulant shot, and an antiseptic tube. Now, in Predator 2, the City Hunter brought a larger looking Medicomp. The City Hunter used this kit when his arm was cut off, so he had to heal its bullet wounds as well. In this kit, we see surgical blades, a shrapnel extractor, wound clamps, a spatula, a burner for melting medicine, a needle full of medicine, two reloads for the needle, a container full of a blue liquid, and an emergency breathing mask. The city hunter then proceeded to rip off materials off the wall and melted them over the flame. This hot material was then used to seal those wounds. Although these medical kits are used for quick healing, it seems like these tools still cause them great amounts of pain, which is why they scream during these procedures. So they also tend to use an adrenaline shot after these procedures. Now the City Hunter also showed to use an emergency breather when he lost his mask. It seems as if the Predators can't breathe as easily on Earth, which is why they might use this kind of device. Now the healing process in the Aliens vs Predator video game seems to be a little bit different. Now they pull out a little device that has two bladed shards or either two needles and they're inserted resulting in quick healing. Now it's interesting to see the little differences between the Predator's Medicomp across the different movies, but what do you guys think about their tools and procedures? Put your comments down below and thanks for watching. If you like these kind of videos then subscribe to the channel and you'll see more in the future. This is Glow, and I'll see you guys in the next video. What's up everyone, Glow here, back with another video surrounding the Predator universe. Now in this video I'll be covering the Netgun Weapon, which is one of my favorite weapons in the Predator arsenal. So this was first seen in Predator 2 when the Predator ambushed the Jamaicans. This weapon is mostly used to control enemies rather than killing them right away. Now it fires a net made of a strong material which is razor sharp which is attached to a strong set of spikes. As the spikes dig into a surface, the net will pin a victim which makes them unable to fight back. Since the net itself is razor sharp, it is capable of killing a target, but slowly over time. Now at this point, the predator can choose to kill the victim right away with another weapon. The material of the net is so strong that knives don't seem to cut through it, but near the end of Predator 2, Harrigan did cut through it while using the predator disc weapon. It is seemed to be stored on the predator's left leg, where it attaches to its armor. It is a lightweight weapon that will not hinder the predator's performance during a hunt if it chooses to carry this item all the time. In the 2004 movie, Alien vs Predator, it was brought back again, but in a different form. The Celtic Predator ejected it by his wrist gauntlet. Now this proved to be useful against humans, and it was used on the great alien, but it wasn't as useful. Although this alien couldn't break out of this normally, its acid blood did burn through the net's material, which allowed it to go free. Now in the 2001 video game, Aliens vs Predator 2, the Predator had access to this weapon. Although it would only trap enemies, it did no damage over time. Humans and aliens could break out of this with melee weapons, although you could not use it on larger enemies like Praetorians. Now I remember using this weapon so much when I used to play the multiplayer in Aliens vs Predator 2 on the PC. 
It was the most fun thing for me to use with the Predator, and I really wish they brought it back in the last AVP game in 2010, but it did not make a return. So what do you guys think about the net gun scene in Predator 2 and Alien vs Predator movie? Which version do you prefer and do you hope it appears in the Predator 2018 film? Put your thoughts in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe as I'll be covering more topics surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching guys, my name is Asaglow, I'll see you in the next video. What's up everyone, it's Asaglow here, back with another video related to the Predator universe. So in this video I'll be talking and explaining the whole thing about skinning and collecting trophies. So why do Predators skin their victims and collect trophies? Now another term for skinning is called flaying. It is the procedure of removing the skin off a victim, either after death or when the prey is still alive. It consists of removing most, if not all, of the skin from the victim's body. Skin victims are then hung by their ankles to intimidate other potential victims. This act is normally carried out on easy prey. Now this brings me to my next topic, which is collecting trophies. Trophies can range from a variety of things from a successful hunt. Either small things off the victim's body, maybe a weapon, a piece of armor, an item of personal significance, but most of the time we see predators collecting the skull of the victim. Collecting a trophy is a display of their skill in defeating prey that prove to be strong. Depending on the size of the trophy collected, the predator may choose to display it in their trophy room or wear it on their body as an attachment on their armor. Now the most commonly known item to collect as a trophy is the skull with the spinal cord attached to it. Now these items would be cleaned of any flesh, muscle, blood, and brain before it's displayed as a trophy. Now in some cases, a body that has been skinned and hung can still be considered a trophy and is left behind merely to show others a display of their skill. Now at the very end of the movie Predator 2, we saw an elder predator giving Mike Harrigan a flintlock pistol dating back to the 18th century. Now this occurred after Harrigan defeated the city hunter Predator. You could say this was an act of giving Harrigan his own trophy for defeating a skilled hunter. So predators will choose to collect trophies from their prey that could range from a lot of things. Now a similar thing happened at the end of the Aliens vs Predator movie in 2004, where the elder predator would present Lex with a spear. Now you could say this was a show of respect and was given to her as a gift because she fought alongside Scar Predator to defeat the alien queen. So what are your opinions of the Predator's act of skinning and collecting trophies? Put your opinions down below in the comment section. Now if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing because I'll do more videos about the Alien and Predator universe in the future. Thanks for watching, my name is Asaglow and I will see you guys in the next video. What's up everyone, Asaglow here. So in today's video, we're going to have a look at a creature that was seen in the 2010 Predator's movie that didn't get much screen time. That creature is the River Ghost. Now, although I couldn't find a listing for this name in the casting list, either it went by another name or it wasn't included at all because it had such a small role in the movie. So the name River Ghost came from an earlier version of the Predator script where it appeared near a river as a ghostly image. Now this is a sentient species that was also hunted by the super predators on the game Preserve Planet. It's believed they were brought to this planet to be hunted because of their great speed and agility. Now in the movie, one of them was able to avoid the trap set by Royce's team and nearly catches Edwin in a chase, but it ends up getting shot by Noland. The river ghosts are humanoid in appearance, but have a pale, insect-like exoskeleton that covers the majority of their body. They don't appear to have eyes, even though their faces have open areas for them. However, they do have a sensory organ that is covered by a movable flap of bone that is located in the center of the forehead. Their teeth can extend forwards from the mouth on bone plates, which leaves a considerable gap for their mouths. Now their talons seem to be greatly elongated and a strange bony almost wing-like protrusion on their backs. Now during production of Predators, KNBFX boss Greg Nicotero had seen a sculpture by Takayuki Takeya called the Erosif Giver, and it was this that later heavily influenced the design direction of the River Ghost. The River Ghost seems to have a symbiotic relationship with small insectoid organisms that live on their skin. It is unknown what purpose these insects do, although 
it's possible they just clean the river ghost skin from bacteria. Now, although this creature had very little screen time in the movie, it somehow never made it into the comic adaptation of Predators. So that covers the river ghost. It is one creature that I wondered about ever since I saw it in the movie. I wanted to know why it was there and where it came from. So hopefully this video gave you guys some insight to the creature. Now this video was requested by a viewer and I think it was a good choice. I got to learn more about this creature and its role while doing some research on it. So if you enjoyed this video then please leave a thumbs up and consider subscribing as I'll be doing more videos that cover the alien and predator universe. Thanks for watching, my name is Asaglow and I'll see you guys in the next video. Predator vs Engineer Who would win? So this battle actually happened in an issue of the comic book Predator, Fire and Stone. The two battled on January 31st of 2219. The predator named Ahab is accompanied by the human named Galgo. This fight commences with some hand-to-hand -hand combat, and while the predator stuns the engineer with a mighty blow, Ahab fires a shoulder cannon shot against the engineer. Right after this, Ahab disconnects the electronic chain which binded him to Galgo. Galgo surprises the predator by leaving it to fight alone. This was upsetting because prior to this, Galgo was fighting alongside the predator against other creatures. Ahab is then caught off guard and is tackled by the engineer. Ahab then suffers multiple blows to the head and on the verge of dying. Meanwhile, Galgo safely retreats to a wooded area, but it doesn't take him long to come to his senses. He realizes to get off this planet alive, he's going to need all the help he can get. So he rushes back to help Ahab. Now at this point, the engineer seems to be taking control of the fight as it appears to be physically stronger than this predator. Ahab is truly weakened and then suffers even more injury by a broken arm and leg at the hands of the engineer. Ahab limps his way into a nearby ship and activates his stealth camouflage in an attempt to lure the engineer inside. Ahab then uses multiple spear gun shots and a final spear is impaled into the chest of the engineer. However, this engineer proves to be very resilient as it manages to pull out the spear during the time Ahab activated his self-destruct device. Right before the engineer is about to finish off Ahab, he gets shot by Galgo who returned to save the injured predator. Galgo used the engineer's weapon and it causes enough damage to put the engineer down long enough for Galgo to help the predator escape. As the two make their way far away from the ship, the engineer slowly recovers and stumbles to reach for the self-destruct device, but it is too late. It blows up the ship and our heroes make it out alive. Now among the rubble, Ahab manages to find the engineer's skull. Now satisfied with completing his mission, Ahab disappears to find more prey to hunt while Galgo continues to protect his friends from incoming xenomorphs until they can find a way to escape the moon they are stranded on. Now a predator did fight another engineer during the comic book Prometheus Life and Death, but that battle was extremely short. This engineer was then killed by an alien queen in the comic book Aliens Life and Death. So what do you guys think about the battle between the predator and the engineer? Did you expect a different result? Put your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content surrounding the Predator and Alien universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Asaglow here. So I want to talk to you guys about the super predators that we saw in the 2010 film called Predators. So first off, we'll talk about their physical traits. Now, although their height and strength can be debatable, they do have some visible differences from the standard predator we've always seen before. Like for example, the super predators have a more slender build. They have a more reptilian appearance as you see by their scaly-like skin and color. Another feature is their dreadlocks are more swept back than a normal predator. Their face is also longer and gives them a snout-like look effect. Now as for their weapons, the super predators only have a single long blade on their gauntlets. Their plasma caster cannon is also modified to shoot much quicker shots. They also choose to wear different amounts of metal and leather on their bodies. The berserker predator is the ultimate hunter. He was the youngest Yachua to ever kill a xenomorph alien and reach the young blood status. He is a relentless and ruthless hunter and is also shown to be sadistic as he savored the fear of the humans throughout the hunt. The Berserker Predator eventually led his own hunting clan, which consisted of himself and two other Youngblood Predators known as Falconer and Tracker. The Falconer Predator doesn't hunt by the normal methods like his clan members do, but instead chose to create his own deadly bird 
which is used to scout and observe their prey in order to give a more insight as to where the prey is located and what kind of technology they were using. The falconer predator seemed to still hunt with some sense of honor as he chose to fight to the death in an honorable final battle. The tracker predator is the one who bred and trained the hellhounds which were the dog-like creatures we saw in the predators movie in 2010. They trained them so well that they helped them hunt and kill a xenomorph in record time, but the hellhounds ripped up their prey so fast that there wasn't much left. The tracker predator seemed to favor the company of his hellhounds more than his actual clanmates, which in turn gave him more time to train them into such efficient killers. Now even though the super predators were brutal killers with vicious hunting methods, they all eventually died. However, this intrigued me enough to want to see them brought back again because we got to see a different type of predator in terms of personality, physical traits, and weapons. So would you guys like to see the super predator type make a return in a future film? Put your comments down below. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to the channel for more predator and alien content in the future. My name is Asaglow. I will see you guys in the next video. So what happened to Royce and Isabel after the Predators movie? Now at the ending of this movie, we see Royce and Isabel have managed to survive their encounter with the three Berserker Predators. They then witness more incoming parachutes, which could indicate more prey is brought to the planet. What species is being dropped down is not shown at the end of the film, but in the comic book sequel of the same movie, it apparently takes place a few weeks after this event, with Royce now alone again. As his character was shown to prefer being alone, he abandoned Isabel. He goes through the same character development as we saw in the movie, where his character is still deciding whether or not he should team up with other survivors. We notice Royce going through an isolated phase as what Nolan has gone through, scavenging anything he could find and just trying to survive. So the story continues with the predator species dropping different alien prey on the game preserve planet in order to keep testing Royce and his abilities as they were impressed with his previous battle against the Berserker Predators. Now at some point in the story, a Predator drops down on the planet to meet up with Royce. Unaware to them, it isn't here to fight them. It makes a brief appearance and then leaves them with a bag of items. It presents him with Predator armor that was designed just for him. This includes body armor, wrist blades, a wrist computer gauntlet, a shoulder cannon, and a biomask that has been programmed in the English language. This was all meant to prepare him for an incoming battle that Royce was unaware of. Perhaps this was a final test of Royce's abilities. Before he has time to learn how to use this technology, they are attacked by a huge, unmasked predator with four arms. As the odds are against them right now, they decide to run away only to be chased by the gigantic creature as they jump off a mountain. As they hide, Royce puts his predator helmet on and tries to quickly learn as much as he can from it. He realizes that this technology can pick up brainwaves, which gives some credibility to the theory that these species can interact with their technology through their minds. As they are then tracked down by this four-armed predator, they escape and hide once again. This time, Isabel is given the shoulder cannon and it's linked up to her sniper rifle. The two eventually kill the four-armed predator creature and the story ends with them seeing a predator ship pass by to drop off more prey on the game preserved planet. The story then ends here with their never ending hunt. Now the cover of this comic book featured the berserker predator, but it was not seen at all during the continuation of the story. Perhaps they made this decision because the fans would buy the comic book considering they would recognize the berserker predator on the cover. Now there is also an unproduced toy of a similar design that was never released. Although it's hard to say if this design was based off the Predator in this comic book or if it was just a separate idea. So what do you guys think about the continued story about Royce and Isabel after the Predator's movie? Do you think this comic book ended it well or would you have preferred to see it extended a little bit further on? Put your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video then subscribe to see more content surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglo, and I'll see you in the next video. Welcome back everyone, Asaglo here. So I'm back covering a very big topic around the Predator universe. So with the Predator species making appearances in comic books, novels, movies, and video games, one of the biggest questions around is, which Predator is the strongest? 
Now for this video, we're going to have a look at a bunch of predators across different sources. And I'm going to base my final judgment on a list of categories like this. How many targets the predator eliminated, if it made any mistakes, and if it died during its mission. So we'll start off with the first predator movie. The jungle hunter proved to be very patient when stalking the special forces rescue team led by Dutch. The jungle hunter was also known to have eliminated the previous group led by Jim Hopper. Although the jungle hunter carefully stalked each member of Dutch's team, it seemed to always show a great sense of stealth even when it was spotted. Now during this hunt, it received minimal bullet wounds. It eventually was caught by surprise when Dutch released a lever that held a giant stone which came down and smashed upon the predator's skull. You could say this predator was careless and it would have ended differently if he didn't play with its prey and just killed Dutch off quickly. Now onto Predator 2 with the City Hunter. This predator had a lot of victims as it killed both the Mexican and Jamaican gang members in different locations. Although this predator did not use its cloaking ability during the meat locker scene, it still managed to use various weapons to wipe out Agent Keys and his men. This predator was skilled with many weapons, but even with all that, it still managed to receive a lot of damage. It was hit by a shotgun, and even managed to lose its left arm. It eventually was killed by Harrigan in the predator's ship. When Harrigan was pretending to be too injured to fight back, he kneeled down and the predator assumed this was the end for the human. As the city hunter raised its arm for one final blow, Harrigan quickly rammed a smart disc into the predator's chest. Once again, you can say this predator was careless and should have finished off his prey much quicker. So now on to the movie Predators. This movie had three predators, but I mainly want to focus on the berserker black predator which was the leader. I want to focus on this one because this one lasted the longest in the movie. Now this black predator barely suffered any bullet wounds, and at the end of the film it had to fight another predator. Now although some sources say that predator was younger and wasn't as experienced, even so that predator did put up quite a fight when they were brawling together in close range combat. The black predator eventually decapitated this predator and focused on Royce, but not before it fell into an explosive trap. Even though this explosion was extremely close to him, it seemed to do almost no damage to the Predator. Now during the battle with Royce, the Black Predator was hit on the helmet many times as it was not able to track Royce with all the fire emitting around him. Although this Predator had the chance to kill Royce, it hesitated as if it was trying to make one final dramatic stab with its blade, when it took so long to do so, that gave Isabel a chance to shoot it with a sniper rifle. This gave Royce the time to decapitate the Black Predator, another example of being careless and taking too long to finish off their prey. Now the movie Alien vs Predator in 2004 also had three predators, so for this one we will focus on Scar Predator since it was the one who survived the longest. According to the story, these predators are younger than the ones in previous films, so two predators were killed off very early on due to being inexperienced against xenomorphs. So Scar Predator was also without a shoulder cannon for the first half of the film, so he had to rely on everything else they had access to. Scar displayed a great amount of skill by killing off a few humans and many aliens through the pyramid. During its rite of passage, it was shown to use the shuriken, shoulder cannon, wrist blades, various vision modes for tracking, and even a sense of honor when it chose not to kill Mr. Wayland. But that decision later changed when Mr. Wayland provoked it more with a flamethrower. Scar eventually succeeded in reclaiming his shoulder cannon, defeating xenomorphs and marking itself with their blood. Now on the surface, he then encountered the alien queen. Scar showed great courage, strength and stamina during this fight, but eventually it was impaled by the alien queen's tail and died from its injuries. Now even if Scar survived the battle against the alien queen, it was going to die because it was impregnated by a facehugger from inside the pyramid. This happened when it was blooding itself and a facehugger caught him off guard without his mask. Now in the Alien vs Predator Requiem movie, the wolf predator turned out to be a very experienced hunter. It was very familiar with the xenomorph species and took charge right away to equip itself with weapons required for this situation. It was also aware of the abomination known as the Pred Alien. Now with so many xenomorphs in this small town, the wolf predator took it upon himself to deal with this matter all by himself. That showed a great amount of bravery and confidence for a single predator. 
Now, throughout this film, the wolf predator did kill a few humans, but was mostly focused on trying to get rid of the alien infestation while reclaiming any leftover predator technology. This predator proved to be very skilled with many weapons. Now, the pred alien showed to have much more brute strength than the wolf predator, and I feel that this was overwhelming him. But even with his injuries it had, the wolf predator managed to land one final death blow on the abomination. It was killed, but not before the pred alien impaled him in return with its own tail. Now, both targets eventually would not have survived the bomb dropped on the town, but you could say the wolf predator might have survived this battle if he chose to use all his weapons on the pred alien instead of disarming itself. So now onto Scarface from the video game Predator Concrete Jungle. So this predator was banished to a planet full of hostile deadly creatures after it failed on its hunt. After time passed by, his previous clanmates returned to see he had survived the hostile planet armed only with a wrist blade and a spear. All this while he only had one eye as the other one was shot by a human when he let his guard down. Now putting all that together, he was given a chance to redeem his honor by eliminating the humans that stole his technology on his previous hunt. In doing so, he wiped them all out while at the same time eliminating three bad blood predators that were brainwashed. Near the end of his mission, Scarface managed to kill Hunter Borgia in his altered state. Hunter Borgia had modified his DNA to be like a predator. Scarface suffered a lot of injuries during the story, but in the end, he reclaimed his honor and managed to survive. Now in the video game Alien vs Predator from 2010, that predator arrived on a planet with only a helmet, with limited vision modes, wrist blades, and a shoulder cannon. The rest of his weapons were acquired from finding dead predators who were there previously. As the story unfolds, he kills off many marines and xenomorphs. He also encounters a Praetorian and eventually kills a Predalien abomination. He does manage to reclaim all of his predator technology and manages to survive with minimal damage. Now, the Predator in a video game from 2001 called Alien vs Predator 2 had a very long mission. It was tasked with freeing any captured Predators, reclaiming their technology, and wiping out the Xenomorphs and any other enemies. It managed to defeat a Praetorian early on in its mission. Along the way, it walked into a trap and was captured and disarmed. After escaping and fighting through the human facility with just its wrist blades, it managed to reclaim all of its stolen technology and escape. It later made its way through a hive and killed many aliens, along with an alien queen. As it went deeper into the hive, it tracked down Rykov and killed him while he was still inside his armored suit. This predator took back his original predator mask and completed its mission alive. Now Alien vs Predator the arcade game is next. These predators were less stealthy than previous ones and that's because of the game's design. They are forced to do a lot of melee combat, so throughout this story, the Predator had to fight off many normal alien types, along with a few large ones that resembled Praetorians. An alien queen was defeated inside the hive, then afterwards, while traversing through a forest, they had to defeat many armed humans. This Predator would also encounter bad bloods. Now near the end of his story, an alien queen would have to be defeated again. This Predator managed to wipe out a ton of aliens while escaping the massive explosion. So the next Predator was the one featured in the Super Nintendo game Alien vs Predator. This Predator had to deal with a ton of aliens in his mission. It also encountered huge alien types like the Gorilla Alien, a Flying Alien, a Snake Alien, and even a Queen Alien. It did survive its mission and hopes to find more worthy prey in future hunts. And the last Predator on this list is the one from the original Alien vs Predator video game on the PC in 1999. This Predator ended up killing a lot of aliens which included facehuggers, drones, a Praetorian, a Predalien, and even an alien queen in the end. Along the way, it also killed many well-armed marines. It did manage to survive its hunt. So, from looking at this list, I would have to say that the strongest and most skilled predator based on the story has to be Scarface from the video game Predator Concrete Jungle. Now yes, it's from a video game, but the story is what made me come to this decision. He dishonored his clan by surviving his own explosion and letting the humans take his technology. But he allowed himself to be judged and sentenced. He also managed to survive his sentence armed only with a wrist blade and spear. Later on he was able to redeem himself by going back to the place of his failed hunt. 
Scarface killed off every target on his list and even some bad bloods that were against him. He suffered a lot of injuries throughout his story, but he regained his honor and managed to survive a mission that was his sole responsibility. The story of Scarface tells us of a predator who accepted his mistakes, but also managed to show a great amount of courage, skill, and determination to be accepted back into his clan. Now, I know there are many predators in other video games, comic books, and novels that I could not cover, but if you guys have a different choice about who is the strongest predator, then feel free to put it down in the comment section and try to leave a brief explanation as to why you chose that predator as being the strongest. I'd really like to know what your choice is. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content around the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglo. I'll see you in the next video. This is the story of Dashande, a well-known predator that a lot of fans can recognize. He is known by other names such as Yayind, which means Brave One. But the humans know him as Broken Tusk because of one of his broken lower mandibles. He was also known to carry an alien skull on his chest armor. Now according to stories, he was the first predator to face a xenomorph in unarmed combat and survived. Now as he grew up, he became an honorable, brave and skillful warrior, always eager to partake in a hunt. During a hunt on the planet called Ryushi, Dashande led a group of young predators that were yet to be marked and blooded. This planet also had an alien queen that was confined. As they landed on the planet, they were spotted by Dr. Kezer. He was struck with fear about never seeing this species on this planet, that he panicked and tried to escape on a hoverbike. Dashande was struck by this human and injured severely while another predator shot and destroyed this vehicle. This resulted in an explosion that killed Dr. Kezer as well. Dashande was left among some of the rubble and abandoned by his young predator clanmates. Later on, some humans locate this site in hopes of trying to find Dr. Kezer, but they find an injured predator and decide to bring it back to the base to save its life. Meanwhile, another predator who is reckless assumes control of the hunting party and mounts a revenge against the humans on Ryushi. This leads to them killing an unarmed female which is considered dishonorable in the predator culture. While Dashande rests in a medical room, other humans inspect his gear and weapons along with the alien skull he brought with them. They wonder if he has any connection to them since another human had found a facehugger earlier on. Now at this point of the story, a human named Mason goes into a dark area of the facility and is attacked by aliens from within. The predator hunting party starts to descend on this complex and they kill many humans and some aliens in the process. One predator finds its way to where Dashande is being medically treated by the humans. He lunges to attack a human but is saved by Dashande. Then a female human unlocks the binds on him. She sets Dashande free and he gathers his equipment and attacks the other predator. Realizing that this predator has a child's skull in his collection, this is considered dishonorable. Dashande then kills his predator. He then sees the remainder of his hunting party fighting aliens, but this battle is interrupted by a stampede of rhinoceros looking animals. Dashande makes his way up a ladder to escape, but is followed by some aliens. With nowhere to escape, he is about to fall down, but is able to latch onto an aircraft that is piloted by Machiko Naguchi. Now with two other human survivors with them, they are then attacked by even more aliens, all of which are killed by Dashande, but one of them gets killed by Machiko. All four of them make their way inside a facility and try to make a new plan, but then Tom dies by a chestburster that was inside of him. The other survivor is doomed to die with a chestbuster inside him as well, but he gives Machiko a map to the escape pod. Doshande and Machiko decide to mount a final attack on the base full of aliens in hopes of getting to the escape pod. Along the way, they encounter a queen alien while ramming through a wall with a vehicle. Doshande fights off the aliens as Machiko preps the escape pod. The alien queen emerges and Dashande attacks it with a spear, but is badly injured by the queen. Machiko comes to his rescue and pulls him away to safety. The queen then grabs Dashande as he is in a chair, but Machiko closes the doors and it cuts her head off. Their escape pod makes it out just in time to avoid the explosion caused by an incoming ship. Now safe away from the explosion, Machiko brings Dashande outside to rest on the floor. He marks her forehead with an alien finger as a sign of her skill and bravery for fighting alongside him against the aliens. Unfortunately for this predator, he succumbs to his injuries and dies, making this battle his last hunt. 
this predator was seen to use the biomask, plasma caster, the plasma firearm, which is also called a burner, the wrist blades, and a combi stick that could separate into two pieces. So what do you think about Deshande's story in his final hunt? Are you satisfied with the way he died, or did you wish he would have survived? Put your thoughts in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content surrounding the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow. I'll see you in the next video. The Predator versus the Terminator. Who do you think would win? Now, the Predator is a hunter species that searches the galaxy for the strongest prey to hunt. Equipped with advanced technology and brutal weapons, alongside their natural increased strength and endurance, and with many decades of hunting experience, this makes the Predator a very dangerous foe. Although most Predators live and hunt by their code of honor, this does give the indication that during a hunt, they are willing to only fight armed or worthy opponents. Now, a Terminator is a machine developed by Skynet. Some models have been made of titanium, while other models have been developed with a heat-resistant hyper-alloy. It is fully armored, has super strength, and controlled by a central microprocessor. It cannot be bargained or reasoned with. It will even kill innocent people to complete its mission. Some older models have been known to last up to 120 years with their current power source. All of this makes the Terminator a difficult enemy to kill. But what if these two characters met? Who would win? Well, they did meet in the comic book Alien vs. Predator vs. Terminator. So, the story starts off with a group finding a very strong female character that in fact turns out to be Ripley from Alien Resurrection. Ripley is then forced to join Call, also from Alien Resurrection, in their mission or her location will be reported to individuals that are looking for her. We then see a scientist named Trollenberg, who is in fact a Terminator itself, trying to create other Terminators in this timeline. When his superiors question why he's using their funds for his own research and not on alien genetic research, his project is about to get shut down until he kills the commander and security staff to protect his work. Meanwhile, a Predator ship is closing in on a space station where our heroes have landed. A battle then undergoes between Trollenberg, Ripley, and even a Predator. The tides then change when a massive Terminator is released. This Terminator is actually an alien-android hybrid. It overpowers this Predator and rips its arm off. This Terminator takes more alien specimens and escapes with the intent of creating more powerful Terminators like itself. Later on, three Predators teleport to Ripley's location to capture her. They are aware of what she really is and decide to experiment on her for further research. She later goes through nightmares of aliens and her time being experimented on by scientists. She learns that the Predators need her help to fight against the Terminators, all because of her acidic blood. She is accepted amongst the Predators to fight alongside them to keep the balance in the galaxy. The Predators are aware of the Terminators' plans to wipe out other life forms and mass produce their killing machines. Now, when this group catches up to the previous Terminator that escaped to a cruiser ship, we now see a second Terminator has been activated. The Terminators decide to kill off the crew here and take control of the ship and head towards a secret base called Black Asteroid, which houses a lot of aliens for research. A Predator group, along with Ripley, arrive here using the stealth camouflage technology that lets them go undetected. A battle then ensues with the Terminators gaining the upper hand, but Ripley then finds some stasis containers with aliens inside. So she frees them and they attack the Terminators. The Predators fire their shoulder cannons at the aliens, and their acidic blood starts to melt through the Terminators. However, one Terminator manages to escape. Call and her friends rally up to escape while Ripley pursues the last Terminator on her own. Ripley tracks it down, but realizes she can't compete with this powerful killing machine. Now, as an act of desperation, Ripley cuts her arm with a knife and lets her acidic blood fall down, and it eats through the reactor's hull, which blows it up. Ripley is presumed dead. No more nightmares of being operated on by scientists. No more nightmares of being part of the enemy she once sought to defeat. She at last has found her peace, and as for Call and her friends, they managed to survive. So, it seemed like the Terminators in the story were even tough for the Predators. The aliens had a minor role in the story since they only showed up in the last issue. I also didn't expect to see Ripley or Call show up in the storyline, but it was nice seeing them make a return. So what do you think about the story? Do you think it should have went a different direction? Put your thoughts in the comment section. 
If you enjoyed this video, then subscribe to see more content around the Alien and Predator universe. Thanks for watching. My name is Asaglow. I'll see you in the next video.